In the previous video, we learned how to set up simple pathfinding in Unity. In this video, we'll go over how we can make our nav mesh dynamic so that it will update to changes in game. We'll use the obstacle component to easily make moving objects part of our nav mesh. We'll also have a look at generating a nav mesh at runtime in the case that you don't know the layout of your level beforehand. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. So let's jump right into it. So here's an even more stripped down scene than the previous video. All we have is a ground plane and a player. The player has a nav mesh component that we set up in the previous video. And we also have a nav mesh object in here with a nav mesh surface, which we can go ahead and hit bake on. And we can see right away that it bakes a nav mesh on our ground. As always, you can use the link in the description if you want to get the example scenes as well as the nav mesh components. The scene that I'm using here is example two. So before we start diving into obstacles and changing the nav mesh in real time, there's another feature that I want to show you. It's called volume modifiers. If we go ahead and right click on our nav mesh and hit create empty, we can now add a component here and I'm going to search for nav mesh modifier and I'm going to select the nav mesh modifier volume. A volume modifier is basically a way for us to mark a certain part of our nav mesh with a specific area type. This way we don't have to link it to a particular object, but we can just say that anything within this bounding box will have some kind of area type. We can easily edit the volume by clicking this edit volume button. And now we can drag on the sides here. I'm holding down alt to scale uniformly. And we can also select what area type we want to overwrite with. If we go ahead and select not walkable and go back to the nav mesh and hit bake, right away we are going to see a hole in our nav mesh. So that's just a really cool feature that I wanted to show you. But so far we've been hitting bake every time we want to change the nav mesh. What if we have moving elements in our scene that we want to affect pathfinding? For this we use obstacles. So let's rebake our scene here and let's go and create one of these obstacles. We'll right click in the hierarchy, go 3D object and select a cube. Let's reset the transform on this cube. Let's move it up by one on the Y and let's change the scale to two by one by two. I've also prepared a material that we can use under materials and I'm going to drag this in. I'm then going to rename our cube to obstacle and as expected if we select our nav mesh it's going to completely ignore our obstacle. To change this we'll go and select our obstacle, hit add component and this time we want to add the nav mesh obstacle component. If we open this up we have a few different settings. The first one is the shape. Here we can select between a box and a capsule. In our case, we're using a box. We can then change the center and size of our obstacle, but I'm just gonna leave all of those as is. And now if we go and select our nav mesh, we can see that for some reason, it's still not reacting to our obstacle. That's because of a very important setting under our obstacle called carve. The reason for this setting is that we have kind of two obstacle modes. This is because we can use obstacles in two ways. If we leave carve unchecked, we'll just rely on what we refer to as obstacle avoidance. This is something that our agent component does. And we actually have some settings for it right here. Obstacle avoidance is when our agent will do its best to avoid obstacles that are nearby, but it won't actually include it in pathfinding. So whenever it's creating a path, it won't take our obstacles into consideration. Only once it gets close to one, will it kind of try and steer away. The second way is using carve. If we check this, our obstacle will actually go ahead and cut out a piece of our nav mesh. And so our agent will plan its route around our obstacle from the very beginning. To show you the difference between these two methods, I've gone ahead and created a bunch of obstacles. Each one of these have a script that will animate them back and forth, as well as a nav mesh obstacle component. Currently carve is set to false. If we go ahead and play, we can see that the obstacles start moving. If we select our nav mesh and hold down control and select our player and go to the top right of our game view to make sure gizmos is enabled, we can actually see that when we click around, the path that our player is calculating is visible. And because the obstacles aren't set to carve, we can see that our agent won't actually calculate a path to try and avoid them. It will only kind of try and move out the way once it gets close. If we select our player, we actually have some settings under the nav mesh agent that configures this behavior. 
If your game is relying a lot on moving obstacles, I suggest you play around with these settings. Here we can adjust the radius and height of the agent, as well as the quality of the obstacle avoidance. We can see that by increasing the radius, our agent will now take a greater path around the obstacles. But of course, there is another way. Let's select all of the obstacles and enable carve. We'll also make sure to disable carve only stationary. If this is enabled, the obstacle won't carve out a piece of the mesh if it's moving. And since our obstacles are moving all the time, we definitely want to disable this. If we then again select the player and the nav mesh and hit play, we can clearly see that our obstacles are now changing the mesh. And if we press on some point on the map, that our path actually gets calculated around these obstacles. Pretty cool. So that's how we can add obstacles to our game. But since we are editing the nav mesh at runtime, this isn't very performant. It's fine to use for a few objects, but we want to bake as much as possible beforehand. However, sometimes we don't know the full layout of our level before the game starts. This is often the case if you're procedurally generating a level. Luckily, we can easily generate a nav mesh at runtime using this same system. So if we go and open up example 3, this scene is even simpler. All we have in here is a ground, a nav mesh surface, and then I've gone ahead and created this level generator script. What this will do is if we hit play, it's going to generate a random level and place our player somewhere in this level. But of course our player is unable to move because our agent is not placed on a nav mesh. So we want to make sure that our nav mesh surface is updated after our level is generated. To do that, I'll open up my level generator script. As you can see, I have a bunch of code in here, but mainly what I'm doing is in the start method, I'm calling a function called generate level. This function is down here, and it's basically just gonna loop over a grid and determine whether or not we wanna spawn a wall for each point on the grid, and we also make sure to spawn in the player. But that's not really important. The main thing that we want to do is make sure that we also update our nav mesh after our level has generated. So under this piece of code is where we want to update our nav mesh. To do this, we first need a reference to our nav mesh surface. And remember, whenever we're dealing with nav mesh through script, we want to go to the top and make sure that we're using Unity Engine.ai. Then we can go and add a variable, which is going to reference our nav mesh surface. So we'll create a public nav mesh surface and we'll call it surface. Then we can go to the point where we want to update our nav mesh. And all we need to do here is write surface dot build nav mesh. And that's it. This is the only function that we need to call in order for the surface to go ahead and rebuild. If we save this, go into Unity and make sure to drag in our nav mesh surface in the new surface field. We then go to our nav mesh and just hit bake right now. So now it's just an empty nav mesh. And if we then hit play, we can see that the nav mesh perfectly fits our level. And we can now start moving around our agent in this procedurally generated maze. Super cool. And we can regenerate this as many times as we want. And one of the coolest things about this is that it's only going to cost us right when the level is generated. We aren't spending processing power each frame on trying to fit the nav mesh to the level. We only do it once. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty much it for this video. In the next one, we'll be covering how to create links between nav meshes and we'll also implement an animated character to replace our temporary cylinder. Make sure to subscribe to get notified once it's out. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in February and a special thanks to Incode We Trust, Patrick McGinley, Diego Geik, Frank, Tristan Down, Dying Guyan, Beffy O, Infinity PBR, Yorai Omer, Hans Hoftoon, Cyborg Mummy, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Beardo Die, Double Tap 45, James P, J Delay, Superman the Great, John Beauregard, Dennis Sullivan, Jason Latito, Alex Rikitsky, Bjorn Fuduknap, Svetlin Svilinov, Jin, Sasha Hopstein, Suni Jakobsen, Gregory Pierce, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Judaman, Rob Fern, and Erasmus. Whew. You guys rock.